Hi green lovers, it's Tara and today is August 6th and I'm about to start my fall and winter vegetable garden and I want to bring you along for that journey. Now I live in California zone 9b and we have a really really long growing season but irrespective of your growing season you do need to remember one really important date and that is what is your first frost date. Now you can just google first frost date with your zip code and there's a number of websites. I typically use Farmer's Almanac and my first frost date is actually December 12th, I believe. Now that's not an exact science. It could be a couple of weeks this side or that side. So I, just to be safe, I'm going to go with December 1st as my first uh, frost date and kind of work backward from there. Now, the reason why the first frost date is really important is because when that first frost date hits, any plant that you have growing in your garden that is not frost tolerant is going to die. So that includes things like beans, it includes things like squash and um, tomatoes and just a, a whole lot of uh, summer uh, vegetables are not going to survive your first frost. So if you're going to be planting anything that you want to harvest before that first frost date, you need to take into consideration how many growing days you have or how many days to harvest more specifically. So let me show you what I'm going to be uh, considering for my fall and winter garden. So here are the seeds that I've laid out to start putting in my garden for uh, a fall harvest as well as for winter. And I've broken them down into several categories. Now the first category is a category that I call do not plant anymore. And the reason why you don't want to plant these seeds anymore is because you're not going to get a harvest before the frost comes and kills it off. Now, this one over here is sweet corn, and what you want to look at is the number of days to harvest. Now, this says 75 to 80 days. I actually have about 150 days, give or take, uh, before my first frost date. So, technically, that should give me plenty of time to get a fall harvest. However, you also need to consider a few more things. Number one, you want to be able to harvest whatever vegetable it is that you're growing for a good 30 days or so. So right off the bat, you need to take 30 days off of your um, days to harvest because you definitely don't want your plant to grow to size and start to produce corn and then have that first frost date kill it off right away, right? So you want about 30 days to harvest. So you take 30 days off of your uh, 117 days in my particular case. Uh, that gives me about so 80, 85 days or so. So it's still cutting it really fine. I guess I could squeeze out a decent harvest from this uh, corn, but I'm not gonna take my chances. Uh, another thing you need to remember is that vegetables also, or vegetable plants grow a lot slower during fall or as the weather starts to get cooler. So 70 to 85 days is just a guide. As the weather gets cooler, the days get shorter. The seed, the plant just takes a whole lot longer to grow. The next category of plants that I want to grow is those that I call direct seed for late summer harvest. Now because I have a long growing season and about 117 days till my uh, first frost date, I actually can squeeze out a harvest from a lot of seeds even if I plant them directly in the ground right now. I've got a couple of months of nice hot weather so anything that grows and uh, you know, gets to harvestable size in about 50, 60 days, uh, they're all good candidates to put in your garden right now. So things like squash, um, this particular one, gray zucchini, um, it, uh, it's got about, let's see, number of days to sprout is seven to 14, days to harvest, 45 to 55, that's just perfect. I should be able to get a harvest, a decent harvest out of this one. And that the same goes for any type of squash uh, for the most part. I tend to choose the ones that are the early varieties. As an example, I've got one over here, which is a Dixie hybrid, supposed to be a very heavy producer, 41 days to harvest, you know? So this is the kind of stuff that I can be pretty sure I'll be able to get a decent harvest out of. 
Cucumbers are another uh, variety of uh, plant that can grow and produce a decent harvest for me uh, before and, and quite, a, quite a long time that I can harvest, maybe about a, a month or so before the frost kills it off. And same with the beans. Beans also grow very rapidly. I can actually succession plant this maybe even one more time after, say, in a couple of weeks. If I plant some today, and then a couple of weeks, I plant another, and then um, I should be able to get a couple of bushels of beans before the, the frost hits. So the next category that I want to direct seed for fall harvest is English peas. Now these are the kinds of peas that you actually grow for the pea. You don't grow it like snap peas, which is, you know, you eat the tender um, pods. This you actually grow for the beans. So they take uh, quite a bit of time to get to harvest, maybe about 90 days or so. The nice thing about English peas is that they are frost tolerant. So if it sneaks into my first frost, frost date, the weather gets cooler, these still should do pretty well. So this particular category, which is start indoors for fall winter harvest, really is the biggest category of seeds that I am going to be planting, or the, the largest number of varieties. Uh, so the first variety is the brassicas. So over here I've got broccoli, I've got cauliflower, I've got more broccoli, I've got cabbage, I've got kohlrabi. All of these should be able to grow well. You know, you start them indoors, they sprout nicely, they grow fast because of the warm weather, but you don't really want to put them out in the intense heat. So wait a little bit, maybe in the September time frame for me when it starts to get just a little bit cooler, you know, mid 70s or so, that's when I will put these out in my garden and hopefully they will grow and produce a harvest for me in fall as well as in early winter. Now these are frost tolerant. Uh, the other variety that I want to grow is uh, these root vegetables. Now, I'm actually going to be starting these in containers and actually keeping them in the containers. I'll just be moving them out when the weather gets cooler. So I'm going to sprout them indoors and I've got things like beets, I've got carrots, I've got turnips. Um, the challenge that I've had with these vegetables, growing them directly in the ground, is I've got so many roly-polies in my backyard and they just love eating these things. Uh, these little seedlings never see the light of day usually when I plant them directly in my garden. So I'm going to grow these in containers starting indoors. Now they don't like their uh, roots to be disturbed so I will grow them in the container that they will continue to grow to full size in. I'm also going to be starting lettuce. Finally it's going to be cool enough to start lettuce. Again, I'm going to start this indoors, I'm going to get it to a little bit of a size and then I'm going to start harvesting the baby greens and I'm going to pull some out and I'm going to put them in my garden when the weather gets cooler in the September time frame to grow head lettuce. So that and some of the other greens I'm going to be growing are amaranth and an herb. I'm going to be growing dill. Now this is a cool weather herb and I just love dill but <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't live in the hot weather, so I've got to plant it either in spring or in late fall, uh, winter. The next variety that I'm going to be planting is a variety that I call Start Indoors for late, in late summer. Um, now these are actually all of my onions, aka onions, leeks, etc., anything in the allium family. So I'm going to be starting these indoors and uh, I find that they actually sprout and grow quite fast when the weather is warmer, but then, you know, they are so hardy outdoors. So I want them to get to a certain size and then I will take them and plant them outdoors and they will go through the winter. I'll be able to hopefully harvest some greens and then um, in spring they will start to grow and hopefully bulb. Uh, the, at least the onions will start to bulb out and they take a while, you know, so I've got onions that I started in early spring in my garden. Uh, they are still growing and they've not yet reached size. So these will take their time to grow, but they will produce uh, the bulbs or the, they're called bulbs, right? Uh, yeah, in the first year and then the second year they go to seed. So uh, the other varieties that I want to plant are these bunching onions. 
and leeks and others like it. Now I hear that these are actually perennials, so I have been growing them as annuals typically, but I think if I grow them in the right place, uh, they should be able to grow as perennials. But we'll see, I'm gonna find out. Another variety actually that I just ordered in the mail is something called um, Egyptian walking onions. Now those are perennials and apparently they are frost hardy, they are, um, uh, you know, heat tolerant, they grow any time of year and they will just proliferate and multiply and they're a very interesting plant to grow as well. So I'm going to be planting those as well as soon as they arrive. So the last variety that I've got laid out here is what I call plant when the weather gets cooler. So these I'm going to just hold on to for just a little bit, maybe mid-September, uh, late September is when I'm going to plant them in the ground. Things like arugula. Now arugula is something that if you plant in the heat, it is going to bolt right away. It, it almost feels like it produces just a couple of leaves and then goes to seed when you plant it in the really hot weather. So I am not even going to take a chance with arugula. I'm going to wait till I feel the weather is nice and cool and this thing is frost tolerant uh, and it will grow through winter. Uh, the other uh, variety that I, or the other plant that I want to uh, put in the ground a little bit later is radish. Now radish is one of those things, they grow very, very quickly under the right circumstances and, and weather conditions and within 25, 30 days you should be able to harvest. Uh, the thing is they do not like the heat. They don't bulb out, they don't grow well, they just struggle. So I'm not even going to try, I'm not going to put them through this. I'm going to wait until the weather cools off and then I'm going to put them in the ground. Same with the peas, uh, the snap peas. I'm going to wait until the weather cools off a little bit and then I'm going to put them in the ground and I'm going to direct sow them outside. I wanted to show you how I actually store my seeds. Now, I'm a seed addict. I, um, I just like storing seeds and buying seeds and saving seeds and I just love seeds. So um, it get, can get out of control. So I have found this on Amazon. I think it was recommended by one of the YouTubers, but uh, it comes with these little um, containers that are just the perfect size to get um, seed packets into. So. Yeah, I've got them organized. These are all of my vegetables. I tried to do it alphabetically and quickly lost that. So, but you know, they're just so easy to read. Um, I've got them in here and I've got another box for flower seeds. And I think I'm gonna have to get more boxes because I'm finding that they're, these many of these boxes are getting really tight with seeds. Either that, I just have to plant more. But yeah, um, I would be interested to know what your seed organizing uh, methods are. There's just so many great ideas on the internet, but this is one that I found and I really, really liked, so I wanted to share that with you. I hope you enjoyed the video of all the things that are going to be going in my garden really soon. One thing that I forgot to mention is spinach. I will be planting spinach as well, I just don't have the seeds. So yes, excited to finally grow spinach once again. Um, and um, yeah, get your uh, winter garden, your fall garden going and until next time, live green and love your greens. <laughs>